What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today we're actually at Alpha's house. I wanted to do a deck profile of a deck that I, I guess, I don't want to say cultivated, but a deck that I uh, built a long time ago. And then recently it popped up again and I'm like, oh, this is kind of interesting. Let's see if we can build it again. And I think funny enough, it's actually pretty good in today's format. And uh, that deck is Luna Light Kaiju. It's something that I feel like a lot of people forgot about. It's strictly a go second OTK deck. And it's a deck that uh, really is a, con it, it's weird. It, it's like a go second OTK, but you can also control with it. Cause if you're not OTKing, Luna bounces the Kaijus back to your hand. You can reuse the Kaijus. It's, it's, it's a lot of really cool plays. And it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of cool that it gives you the option of OTKing. It kind of gives you the option of a control based deck as well, which is really nice. But if you guys enjoy these deck profiles, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. And uh, with that, let's get right into the deck profile. So uh, we're starting off here with the main lady herself, Three Fairy Tail Luna. This card, essentially, if you guys don't know what it does, on normal summon, you can search another one. So like as soon as you see one, you'll get the other ones, which is nice because you just keep hand advantage. But, but the other effect is when it's on the field, essentially, you can target a card on the field and bounce it back to the owner's hand. And that's really powerful because you can imagine when you're playing a ton of Kaiju, so you're playing three Gamma Seal, uh, three Gadarla, as well as the one Dogran. So when you're playing a ton of Gaijus and your opponent sets up a, like a larger board or a wider board, right? You can go Kaiju, let's say like the Omni Negate, whatever your opponent puts up. You go Luna, Luna bounce the Kaiju. Of course, this is your Kaiju, so it's gonna go back to your own hand. And then once it goes back to your own hand, you can Kaiju your opponent again, which is kind of busted if you think about it, right? And if you open two Kaijus, uh, you can go Kaiju your opponent, summon Luna, uh, special your own Kaiju, because now your opponent controls a Kaiju. So you can special one onto your side of the field, then use Luna, bounce this back, Kaiju again, and then essentially um, you're breaking your whole opponent's board, you're getting bodies on your side of the field, which is nice. And the reason why we're playing these ones is because these are the level eights and uh, that's pretty important in this deck. So this is kind of like the whole point of the deck, the Luna Light Kaiju control is, is, is really nice here. And then this is kind of where all the OTK stuff comes in. So we're playing three Bigfoot, three Thunderbird. Of course for dangers, these are really powerful. Uh, they work really well with trade-in. Uh, they work really well on their own as well, especially if you open a card uh, like Gizmek over here. So these are all our level eight monsters are really powerful ones. So essentially if you use Bigfoot or Thunderbird, uh, you can activate their effects to either get a body on the, the, your side of the field, which again helps you OTK and it helps you draw a card, which is nice. But if they do get pitched, they also have the most relevant effects. Uh, essentially this one's gonna pop a face up card. This card is gonna pop a face down card, which is really nice. So it doesn't necessarily have to be spell or trap by the way. It just says it pops a set card. Right, so if your opponent has a set monster by any means, this can pop that. And this can also pop any face-up card, so it doesn't have to necessarily be a monster. It can be a face-up spell or trap as well, right? So uh, that's something I feel like a lot of people forget. And then again, if you have these in hand with something like Gizmek, and then your opponent hits the Gizmek, you summon this, you get a body, you get a draw. Gizmek in the graveyard is an extra body for you, so. Um, these are your best level eight monsters to be playing. Uh, they're your best, I guess, extenders for the deck. And then another card that I really like playing is three alpha. It's another level eight body on the board for you, which is really nice. And uh, the nice thing about Alpha is it's 3k attack. Um, it can bounce another card. It kind of has that Luna effect where it's kind of like, again, you're playing a control uh, list or your control profile. So that's why I really like these three cards um, or this one card and you're playing it at three. So this is very powerful, of course. Uh, speaking of good going second cards that are really good for multiple reasons, uh, we're playing three Fenrir as well as one Pank. So these are of course not level eight. So everything here that you guys saw were level eight. These of course are not level eight, but they're still so important going second. Pank tops pretty much out mostly everything. And then Fenrir being able to deck thin um, is really powerful. Being able to do the battle phase shenanigans where you attack, banish a card your opponent controls is really nice as well. So it's one of those things that's gonna give you OTK potential, even though again, it doesn't synergize with the level eights. It does so many other really powerful things for you. So you need to be playing these uh, these guys over here, I would think. So uh, I'm very happy with this lineup and that's it for all the monsters. So you guys can see we're not playing any hand traps. Uh, we're really focused on being able to go second and break boards and OTK, right? So I guess in theory, if you guys wanted to, I'll just say this, if you guys wanted to play hand traps, you can cut these four for hand traps, but I actually don't like that because I don't feel like four, like even if you were to play four hand traps, it's not enough. So it's not really worth it. I'd just rather play more board breakers. And oh, one more thing I will say is they synergize really well with each other. So um, Fenrir and uh, Pankatops can be special summoned when you control no monsters or and your opponent controls like a monster in this case. So these are gonna get themselves on the side of the field when you don't have any monsters. Alpha can summon itself when um, your opponent has, I think the attack of your opponent's monsters are higher than yours. So if your opponent puts up a board of like three or four monsters, most of the time 2400 is still gonna be lower, 2600 is still gonna be lower. So they can still special summon the alpha, which is really nice. So it kind of synergizes in that way as well, which is really cool. Uh, which is really cool. So 
Uh, these cards are all really powerful. Then for the spell cards, we're playing a ton of power spells. Again, we want to go second break board. So we're playing mind control, change of the heart. Um, these cards are also really powerful, of course, to go into your link plays, to take your opponent's monsters, which is really nice. And a lot of the time, these kind of bait out your monster negates, like your opponent's monster negates. So I play TTT as well. TT is a really good draw card if you need to draw two. It's another change of heart and mind control if you need it to be. So that's why I really like these cards because it's like, okay, I activate uh, change of heart. Your opponent goes like, let's say Baron to negate it. You're like, all right, let me take TTT now. Let me take your Baron if I need to take it. Then I can use your Baron if I pop a card on your side of the field. Then I can link your Baron away, whatever. That could be really powerful. Of course, depending on your hand, um, there are some hands where you'd rather draw two, so you can use the draw two effect. So I think TTT is really good. And the really nice thing about this deck again is it baits out so many negates that your opponent would put on the board and then TTD just becomes really powerful, right? So that's why I'm playing these cards over here. Um, these are kind of like our board breakers as well as uh, three of the Slumber. Slumber actually like into purely specifically is not the best, but it's actually really good into a lot of other things. And your opponent, a lot of the time, if they're not able to stop this, they want to ash it, right? Because like, if they have ash, they're like, okay, we have to stop this because we don't want our board to be broken. But it's like, okay, now you've ashed it. Now you've used a monster effect, TTT's live. Um, if you've used a monster effect that's like an Omni Negate on the board, TTT's live. And then if you don't have a Negate for this, then it breaks your board and then I can go off, right? So I still really like this card. Pitching this off at of Danger is also not bad because you can banish it from your graveyard and then search a Kaiju, which is really powerful. So uh, this card is really, really powerful. And then um, I guess for the last board breaker, it's Harpies. Uh, we don't have a lot of back row hate. This is the only main deck back row hate. And then you would side back row hate, but uh, for the main deck, this is all you need. So these are kind of like our board breaking cards here. And they're really, really powerful, of course. Next, uh, we're playing three trade-in. Um, I'm proxying the third. Sorry, guys, I couldn't, I'm sorry. I, I, I couldn't find the third, I don't, I don't know. Like, I just, I can't find the third trade-in, I'm sorry. But um, you do want to definitely play three though. That's not questionable. You're playing so many level eight monsters that three is very necessary. And again, it's one of those things where it's if I hand trap or my opponent hand traps me, TTT's live. And if they don't hand trap me, I get to draw two, potentially pitch a danger, potentially pitch a Gizmek, which is really, really powerful. So 100% play three traded. Sorry, I could only find two. It is what it is, guys. Just whatever. It is what it is. All right, play, play three traded. Next, uh, for the draw cards, we're playing two Desires, of course. I think Desires is just the best draw card you can play in this deck. Uh, you don't want to play Prosperity or anything because um, you definitely like want to be able to OTK. So that's why I like Desires. And then one called by, of course, for the hand traps. It's, it's a pretty hand trap heavy format. So that's it for the main deck. It's 40 cards in the main deck. I hope I explained it kind of well and how this everything synergizes with each other. The side deck, I'm going to show you guys an extra deck and kind of like a post Syac side deck. Uh, the side deck, of course, is going to always be um, built differently based off of your locals. But I'm just going to give you guys an example of a side deck. So for the extra deck here, I'm not going to go too much in depth because I think it's pretty just standard. You're playing a lot of good rank 8 monsters. So Dingirsu is a really good rank 8. Lancelot's really good when you're going to time because you can attack directly. Um, you're playing a little OTK package here. So Dragoobion with the number 100. And then the monsters you're using, because you, with Dragoobion, um, what you have to do is you have to put another number dragon monster. Uh, usually a lot of the time it's number 38, but I actually chose to play an extra dragon, which is the number 107. Um, and that's because this card's actually not bad on its own. But a lot of the time, if let's say this gets stopped or I can't be able to OTK, I'd rather put the 107 under it so then I can later go into Hope Harbinger. And again, this this extra deck does have a lot of space. So anyways, this is your OTK package over here. I like Santa Fond. Uh, there's not many graveyard decks, you know, happening or going around right now. But if there ever is, this card's really powerful. Two Zeus, of course, because you're playing so many uh, like Xyz monsters. Then we're playing uh, one Asa and one Dark. Again, your monsters are mostly Dark and Fenrir's and, and Pankatops and I think Alpha's and Earth as well. And it's also really powerful when you're able to change a heart or TTT or whatever, take your opponent's monsters. Um, then we're just playing IP, Unicorn, BLS, and Access Code. BLS is really good, obviously, because your monsters are all level 8, 7 or higher. So then when you make this, it's very powerful. Access Code just an OTK card. So um, the extra deck, I don't think, needs much explaining. It, it makes a lot of sense, I think, in my opinion. Uh, you just... You don't even need the extra deck too much. You just really go into it when you don't have any other options. And the rank eight pool in this game is pretty powerful. Just to have an OTK pool, uh, to have Ding that can send anything is really powerful. So uh, for the side deck here, I'm going to show you guys like a, a kind of like side deck that I built. Again, it's not perfect. It's not necessarily something you have to build. I just want to show you guys an example. Three Denko for the back row matchups as well as three Lightning Storm. Uh, Denko makes a lot of sense here because you guys saw the profile, right? There's no normal summons in this deck outside of Luna. And uh, so I think Denko makes a lot of sense against a lot of the back row matchups. You're also never going to be playing back row, especially because you're siding these and going second against back row, right? So these cards are all really powerful. And then when your opponent thinks they're smarter than you and makes you go first, you're playing three skill drain, uh, three judgment, and three there can be only one. These are broken. Like these are broken. So skill drain makes it so that you're like, oh, I got big monsters and I'm going to just beat you from like beat you down, right? Um, there can only be one is also broken because uh, Psychic, Dino, Beast, uh, we got Machine over here, Winged Beast, 
Uh, I guess he's a beast, so it doesn't really work with Alpha, but still. Insect. We got Aqua, so like there can only be one is insane, especially when you kaiju your opponent. So then this is kind of like where the control aspect can come in. If you can just kaiju your opponent, um, again, you're citing this and going first, right? But let's just say uh, you kaiju your opponent, you put them also on their side of the field, they're, they're stuck under there, only be one, right? So um, yeah, the, I don't know, I think this deck is really cool. Um, I'm not gonna tell you that this deck is gonna take you to a YCS and you're gonna win a YCS. Although someone played a deck similar to this at the Las Vegas and I think they either topped or they just bubbled out. So there's potential, I think this deck's really cool. Um, I think you guys should definitely try it out for yourselves. It's a deck that I built a long time ago and it's a deck that I feel like actually has a lot of support now. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you Alpha for letting me use your house and filming for me. I appreciate you. I, I really think that's all I gotta say. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. And with that, spank up. I know. Easy.